And joining me now is Hudson Institute Senior Fellow Rebecca Heinrichs. Well, Rebecca, let's go to the videotape because we have the head of NATO himself, the horse's mouth, talking about how, in fact, NATO members are going to be paying more. Let's play the tape from yesterday. After years of decline, when allies were cutting billions, now they are adding billions. Before the trend was down, now the trend is up. There is a new sense of urgency due to President Trump's strong leadership on defense spending. Today, allies agreed to redouble their efforts, and this will make NATO stronger. So a lot of people right now are, are, are quoting Macron and saying that uh, the president misspoke. Based on what the head of NATO just said, that's, that's not a misspeak at all. No, that's not a misspeak at all. No, I think that, you know, President Trump certainly got commitments from, from individual countries to move faster, um, verbal commitments to, that to, to get to that 2%. Um, you know, it's hard to explain why certain countries are kind of peeling off and saying that they can't meet that or that they won't meet that. But I think, you know, the, the bigger question here is, why won't these other countries, even without the pressure of the American president, rise to the occasion and spend, we're, you know, we're just asking for 2% of GDP. I mean, this is, doesn't, doesn't matter how big your economy is. Surely right. you, can, you can afford 2% for your own security. And there's been all kinds of threats from terrorism. Um, the, the migrant issue has been a challenge because it's brought some terrorism challenges um, across Europe. And then you also have the threat from, from Russia for a yeah. lot of these countries. And, but again, and, now, you know, you have the head of NATO saying, in fact, we are going to be paying more. Right. We are already paying more, but we're going to be paying more in the future. Let's look to the future now, the future meeting between Trump and Putin. A lot of people, again, questioning whether the, the president's giving Putin too much of a break. But he didn't give the Russians any break at all when he hammered down on this gas deal between Russia and Germany that's going to make Germany much more dependent on Russia than it ever was for energy. That's exactly right. If you look at what President Trump has done in terms of American foreign policy since he has taken office, he has been incredibly tough, not tough on Russia. I mean, he's just pursuing U.S. interests. He's trying to get our European allies to get out of the, out from underneath the thumb of the Russians in terms of their energy monopoly, trying to break up the energy markets. That's part of what he announced whenever he was in Poland supporting the Three Seas Initiative um, and trying to get energy markets, you know, to diversified in, in Central Europe, Eastern Europe. And so that was a powerful point when President Trump said, you know, how is it that we're going to encourage everybody or right. we're going to try to spend more to deter Russia when when countries like Germany are, are enabling Russia to actually continue what they're and doing again, in terms of energy. You think of what he has actually done with regard to Russia as opposed to what he says. He says he wants to be their friends. He wants to, to have a good relationship. Look at Syria. Look at where we have actually attacked Russian troops on the ground, where we have attacked Russian surrogates on the ground as well. I mean, the actions speak louder than the words. And, and I, I have to wonder what goal the president does have in the long run with this this meeting with Putin. Well, it's not even just, yes, we've we've killed, not only have we uh, obviously killed Russian allies in Syria, we've killed actual Russians in Syria. Um, we have also strengthened our nuclear deterrent force, um, including particular weapon systems that the Russians don't like, but we're, we're funding them and going to deploy them to deter Russia. Um, and so we're, we're investing in military technology specifically to gain the, the, the strategic advantage over the Russians. So President Trump has been very tough um, in terms of pursuing U.S. interests in spite of Russian objections, much, much more so than the Obama administration did. I think what he's looking for in terms of this meeting with, with, with President yeah. Putin is to just have some respect between the two leaders, to find where there are, is common ground that they can work together and let President Putin know that this is a president who's not going to be pushed around in terms of pursuing U.S. foreign policy. Yeah. But it is hard to respect somebody like Putin, though, i got to say. Rebecca Heinrichs, <laughs> good to see you. Rebecca, thank you very much.